Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Officially known as the Thunderbolt II, universally known as the Warthog because of its appearance. This feared warplane has become known as the Tank Buster for its ability to terrorize the armored vehicles of the enemy. In today's episode, we will learn about the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II, the only production-built aircraft designed solely for close air support for ground forces to have served with the U.S. Air Force. It has been in service since October 1975, serving in missions during the Gulf War, the Balkans during the 1990s, and Afghanistan, Iraq, and Libya during the 2000s. The Warthog is a twin-engine subsonic attack aircraft mainly used against armored ground vehicles. It offers excellent maneuverability at low airspeeds and altitudes, while maintaining a highly accurate weapons delivery platform and can fire 3,900 rounds per minute. With its 30 millimeter GAU 8A Gatling gun. Thanks to the titanium cockpit armor and redundant systems, the plane can survive direct hits from armor piercing and high explosive projectiles of up to 23 millimeters. The A-10 is the successor of two crucial aircraft in American military history. Its direct predecessor, the A-1 Sky Raider, a piston engine attack aircraft in service from 1946 to 1973. Playing a role in both the Korean War and Vietnam War. It also served as a base for the design of the A-10 Thunderbolt II, being the Warthog, a modernized version of the Sky Raider, with a heavy payload and good endurance. It was built to satisfy the requirement of an all-weather attack aircraft for Navy long-range interdiction missions and short takeoff and landing capability for Marine close air support. Despite its longevity and success, the Sky Raider was replaced by the A-6 Intruder. This innovative aircraft served from 1963 up to 1997. Yet the American military was looking for an aircraft that combined the capabilities of both the A-1 and A-6 which led to the Warthog taking center stage in the Air Force. The A-10 combines not only the flight capabilities of both its predecessors, but also the type of weaponry available, giving it a more comprehensive range of attack potential. Under the wings, different types of weapons can be mounted according to the squadron and mission, with Hydra 70 rocket pods being a common choice as they have ideal characteristics for air-to-ground combat. But the primary weapon of the A-10 is the 30 by 173 millimeter GAU A-8 Avenger autocannon that fires depleted uranium armor-piercing rounds. These are loaded by means of an ammunition transfer cart connected to the aircraft via a transfer adapter that allows it to load the cannon quickly. A 
apart from carrying rockets and a cannon, it is also capable of loading general-purpose bombs used to destroy more prominent targets, including the GBU-35 version 3 Direct Attack Munition, a guided bomb utilized for a precision strike against targets. The bomb is assembled by hand by crew members and then loaded onto the aircraft, who feel proud of their contribution to the armed forces of the United States. All weapons are tested in military training sites in the deserts of Nevada and Utah prior to being used in combat. These tests were done by the 422nd and 59th Test and Evaluation Squadrons against surrogate tanks equipped with ERA to put the weaponry to a maximum capacity test. The results concluded that the tanks were rendered inoperative and that a single A-10 is capable of immobilizing from 9 to 10 targets with a full magazine of the cannon. There has been an additional focus on these tests since 2020, when new incendiary rounds for the GAU-8 Avenger cannon were created. To carry out the missions successfully, the A-10 not only needs to be able to handle the flight and a variety of weapons with ease, but also prove capable of landing in rugged terrain. The Thunderbolt II is designed for takeoff and landing from rough airfields, where short or no airstrips are found. and achieved thanks to the combination of the rugged landing gear, low pressure tires, and low approach and stall speed. The main landing gear consists of two leading wheels on each aircraft side with independent operation. Additionally, it is equipped with long travel hydraulics that absorbs shocks from rough landings. These capabilities are tested in controlled environments, including highways and desert terrains that emulate scenarios on the battlefield. For example, the exercise done by the Michigan Air National Guard when a 9,000 feet strip of the M32 was closed for the Northern Agility Run, where the A-10 capabilities were demonstrated, including engine running refueling, quick rearming, and austere landing. showing the Warthog's ability to be prepared for missions in a short time in almost any environment. A similar exercise was carried out in 2016 on a highway in Estonia. The primary purpose was to complete both landing and takeoff maneuvers in short distances and irregular terrains, with moving parts around the plane. However, all these abilities and weaponry become useless without a proper preparation and maintenance regimen for the aircraft. The flight preparation process starts with pre-flight inspection of the aircraft, where critical systems are checked for optimal functionality, and any modifications or repairs necessary are performed by the pilot and crew. Upon the end of the inspection phase, the fuel stage starts, 
ensuring to add enough fuel to comply with the assigned mission. In parallel, the necessary weapons and ammunition are loaded onto the plane. Another essential part of maintenance is the inspection of fuel, not only to ensure that the proper fuel levels are in the tank, but also that it has the proper quality and is not contaminated by the environment. A special focus was put on this task in 2015 in Slovakia, when the NATO F-35 fuel was introduced for use in the A-10 Thunderbolt for the very first time. When test runs with the fuel are done, and quality checks are done to ensure there are no external contaminants, such as water or dirt. The NATO F-35, also known as JP-8, is then compared to the benchmark set by its predecessor, the JP-4, in order to determine if the performance is improved. The choice in the change of fuel is for a reduction in emissions and more efficient fuel consumption in a broader range of environments, including cold weather and isolated ones. This is due to its properties that give the fuel a longer shelf life and better performance at low operating temperatures. The A-10 is not only a versatile attack jet, but also a menacing character thanks to its distinct paint job that gives it its nickname, the Warthog. Although special paint jobs have been given to some units to commemorate historical Air Force squadrons, like the Indiana ANG A-10, nicknamed Black Snake, which features a unique paint scheme that pays tribute to the 100 years of aviation in the Indiana National Guard. The paint scheme features a dark gray and black color scheme, with breaks of standard A-10 along the wings, engine, and fuselage. Along with these, the nose of the aircraft is complete with the distinctive 122nd FW green-eyed snake, complete with fangs surrounding the aircraft's 30-millimeter rotary cannon. Yet every attack aircraft is eventually replaced with those planes that are capable of completing the missions more effectively and safely. And as the A-10 replaced the A-6, several other active jets are now becoming possible replacements for the Warthog, including the A-29 Super Tucano. The Super Tucano is a single-engine, high-wind, turboprop aircraft designed by Embraer in collaboration with U.S. defense company Sierra Nevada Corporation. It is primarily used as a light attack aircraft and trainer by several air forces worldwide. One of the critical features of the A-29 is its versatile armament capabilities. It can carry bombs, rockets, missiles, and guns with a built-in 50 caliber machine gun in each wing as its primary weapon. It has been mentioned as a possible replacement for the A-10, as different countries around the world, such as Brazil, Colombia, Lebanon, and Angolia, have been using it for close air support missions. Similar to those carried out by the United States with the A-10. Although this warcraft is not being used by the American military, it is being actively considered for future incorporation into the aircraft fleet. Today, we have learned about the 30-plus year history of the A-10 Thunderbolt II and how it has been intimidating enemy forces. Not only with its looks and sounds, but with its versatility in operating in diverse environments, and employing a varied amount of weapons that allow it to target different armored vehicles. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it.
make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.